Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to replace your coolant hoses in your car. Now right here I've got a set of HPS silicone hardened coolant lines for your car. Now this right here is everything that I need to replace the coolant hoses that go to and from the radiator and to and from the heater core. Now I'm going to be showing you guys today how to take it out, how to distinguish if you need to replace them even with OEM stuff and also how to get the coolant topped back up once we take that out. So let's get right into it. So today I'm going to be replacing the coolant lines found on my Honda Accord. Now my Honda, I've got one radiator hose, the upper one, found right here. And I have a lower one that's attached to the bottom side of the radiator that's located right here. I'm going to be taking out both of those OEM pieces and replacing them with a set of better silicone hoses. Now those things are going to be a lot more heat resistant. They're going to be more durable and they're going to be more flexible, which means they're going to be less prone to breaking on you. Now these hoses that I have on my car, they don't seem to be too bad, but I'm gonna show you how to inspect them to see if you need to replace them. So right here, this is the upper radiator hose that comes from the engine, through this hose, up to the rad. Now to inspect to see if this needs to be replaced, what you first need to do is first let the car warm up, then let it cool a little bit just so that the coolant isn't hot, but it's warm. At that point, the hose is gonna be slightly flexible and you're just gonna see if there's any kind of bubbling any kind of holes, any leaks, maybe around here by where it clamps on from the hose to the rad, you might have a leak here. Now, wherever it would be, you'd be able to run your hand along here, squeeze it, and if it feels very weird, same one spot, if it's leaking from one spot, you know that that hose you're gonna have to replace. Now, if one hose needs to be replaced, that would also means that the other ones are probably not too far behind it. Now this vehicle that I'm working on right now is my Honda Accord and it's a 2009, which means that it's been on the road for seven years. Now, from that, I can go ahead and take these clamps off, remove this hose and replace it with a better HPS one and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. So I have the upper rad hose right there. I have the lower one right there that comes from the thermostat from the block down to the bottom side of the radiator. So I've got those two there and then I have a two additional ones that are attached right there, one and two, that run behind the engine, through the firewall, and into the heater core. Now, through there, that is where you're gonna be getting heat inside the car during the winter. So, I'm gonna be taking those two clamps off, along with the ones down here. I'm gonna be removing that so I can take the line out, along with the ones found over here. Now, when you take these clamps out, you are a 100% sure going to be losing a little bit of coolant because you're gonna be opening this up. So, you can do this one of many ways. You can take this out and expect to spill a little bit of coolant on the ground, which is normal, or you can, too, open up the pepcock, which is found on the bottom side of the rad. Now, if we take a look from underneath the engine, underneath the front bumper, you can see that little, that little nipple right there. Now, if you can see, there's a little white part at the front, and that is the pepcock drained off. So if you crack that open, so if you turn it to the left, all the coolant is gonna come out of that little valve found on the black part. So all the coolant is gonna drain out of there, and once you do that, there's not gonna be any more coolant left inside the radiator. Now, that way, you're gonna be removing all of the coolant from there, and you're not really gonna be making a mess. However, you are gonna be losing a lot of coolant. Now, you can do this any way you want. You can take it all out if you like, or you can leave the coolant in there and work quick to remove the hoses. It's entirely up to you. But whatever option you use, make sure that you catch any of the coolant that falls down onto the engine or underneath because you don't wanna allow this to run off into the groundwater because the coolant is not environmentally safe. It's not a good thing to be putting into our plants. Now, I'm gonna start off and show you how to replace the upper rad hose found right here. So first things first, I'm going to be using a set of pliers right here to take off this clamp and slide it back onto the hose. So just pinch it until you can move it forward. And then at this point, the hose is not going to be really clamped onto the part that's going to be pushing out from the rack. So, oh, it's a little bit longer than that, so I'll just have to slide it out a little bit more. Now if you push it up like that, you're going to be safe. And then from there, you can slide off the upper part of the rad hose. And from right there, you can already see that it's starting to leak a little bit. Now I'm going to push that back on and take off the clamp found over here. So down on this end of this coolant line. So whichever way you can, you're just going to be taking off this clamp right here 
and sliding it down just like we did earlier. So. so you can see right there, we're just moving it down a little bit. Now at this point, I should be able to take off this hose from this end and also found down here. Now before I go ahead and actually remove the entire thing, I'm gonna get my new HPS silicone hose and get ready to slide it over top of both ends as soon as I take this out. That way I'm gonna be minimizing how much coolant is gonna be actually lost and I'm gonna have to replace it. Now this one right here is our upper silicone radiator hose for the top one. So this is gonna be a direct plug and play from this one. You can see that it's got the same kinks, the same bends, and it's identical in length, which means I'm not gonna have any compatibility issues when installing this. Now, when you use this, you're gonna be doing one of two things. You can either reuse the OEM clamps or using the other clamps that are included in the kit. So you have enough for each one of the hoses. So because we have four hoses in total, we're gonna have eight clamps. We're gonna take those out. You can see we're gonna have two big ones for each hose and two small ones. Oops. Nice. So from this end right here, before I go ahead and install it, I'm gonna slide this clamp over top. I'm gonna to do the same thing with the other side. Just slide it over top, and then like that, we're ready to go. So we can start with whichever end we want. I'm gonna start by removing this clamp over here first, just because this end here is higher than that side. So theoretically, I should be losing less coolant by taking this side off first, and then working to the lower side. So here we go, I'm just gonna get ready to pull this out. Now, ready? Here we go. Yep, I'm losing some no matter what. There's that, slide this over top. Do the same thing for down here. Okay, now the faster you do this, the less amount of coolant you're actually gonna be losing. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Um, I did lose a little bit, so I'm probably gonna have to give the, uh, the engine a quick rinse down, but I mean, this coolant hose is essentially in. Now it's just a matter of tightening these up. So we're gonna loosen this so we can slide this over top. Like that. Now I'm just gonna have the clamp so that the bolt is facing up. So right here, I'm just gonna slide that like so and tighten this up until this is tight. Now you don't wanna go too tight to the point that you're actually gonna be damaging the clamp. You just wanna have it so it's snug. And you're gonna be doing the same thing for that end. Now what's really nice about this kit is that it's got all the hoses and all the clamps and they're actually really nice quality. Like even the clamps, they have the, uh, the name HPS laser etched on each one of them. So it actually looks really nice when you have them installed. So. so there's the one hose done, that's the upper. Now we're moving to the lower. Now the lower rad hose right here, if you can see it's connected by one clamp right before the thermostat. And then if we follow it, it's gonna be found to underneath the radiator. Now we're gonna have another clamp exactly like that found for the bottom clip. And if we can't get to it by hand, I'm gonna show you how to use a special OTC tool to get that clamp removed. So see this clamp right here? This is gonna be slightly difficult to remove because we don't have too much space to work with. So I might not be able to get a set of pliers like this in here to squeeze that clamp and remove it. And that's why I have this tool right here from OTC. Now I'm gonna first show you the zoomed in format of what's you know, really happening. Um, I've got this little part right here that's attached to, what would you call this? A handle. And you're gonna attach both ends like so one on the top part of the clamp, one on the bottom, and when you squeeze the handle, it's gonna apply pressure, and you can loosen this very easily. So this is the entire tool. So you have the handle right here, and the other end, once you loosen this, oops, and dent your car, <laughs> uh, you attach this clamp to over top of whatever you wanna tighten up or loosen. So if you wanna take this clamp off and say move it up or down the pipe, you just grab this end, 
slide it over top of both of the, the little clamps on there. And then with this part, all that you're doing is squeezing. And if you can hear it, it like ratchets itself in. So once you have it loose, it'll stay loose with this mechanism right here. Okay, ready? So listen. See, that's tight. There's click one. If you want it looser and you want it to hold it there, there's click two. And look at that, it just slid right off. So once you loosen it like this, I'll get a zoomed in shot of this just to show you guys what this looks like. See right there, see that little, that little part right there? That's a retainer piece that's holding this clamp open. So once you have it opened up like this, you can take the clamp off the hose and we can install our new ones. So using the OTC tool, you can slide this over top of whatever clamp you're working with. So right here, we've got that slid over top of both ends. We're gonna squeeze the clamp. Once we have it aligned, squeeze the clamp until it locks, and then we can slide our clamp down the line. So, so once we have it tightened up like that, we can just slide this literally right down the line. So with it there, it's not gonna be putting any pressure down on this end right over here by the thermostat. And once we're ready, we can just back off the pressure on the clamp. Like that, and we'll continue on to the other one. Now we need to move down, and this tool is gonna be very handy to take off the clamp just like this, found on the bottom side of the rat. Now whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and pull off both this side right here for the coolant hose. There's one, that's off and leaking, and you're gonna be doing the exact same thing to the one down here for the lower rat. And there's the second one. Now, is this job easy? Yes. Is it messy? Yes. <laughs> so as soon as you put these two, uh, these two lines on, clamp these two pieces down, just like we did before for the upper rad piece, and then clamp it down, and then all of this part is gonna be done. Now that we have these two coolant lines now installed and tightened up, we're gonna move to the two coolant lines right there that go from the block, through the firewall, and into the heater core. So here we are with one, two, and three Coolant line's now done, and if you can tell right there, there's another one that's going to the heater core that we need to change out. Now, it's very simple and very straightforward. Now, installing these is the exact same way as before, so we're just removing the one clamp on the one end, we're doing the same thing on the other, and then swapping it out with the HPS silicone pipe, and then clamping it over top. Now, we're gonna have one for the coolant inlet, and one for the coolant outlet going to the heater core. Right back there. Now over time, these kind of coolant lines, they're eventually going to deteriorate, crack, and fail on you. Now if you take a look on the inside of them, look on the coolant line on the left, the silicone one, you can see how many strands or fabric lines that there are on the inside. Whereas on the rubber line, there's only one of them. So this is gonna be a lot stronger, much more heat resistant, and it's not gonna fail us, say we go to the track, push our car, or get the system hot. Now, simply swapping them over, is gonna do your car some good, and not only that, it makes the engine bay look really nice when you install them on the car. So now that we've got all four of the coolant lines now installed on the car, it's now time to go ahead and install some coolant back into the reservoir and into the rad. Now we lost a lot of coolant when we took out each one of the lines and we have to replenish that so our coolant system works along with our heater core. Now otherwise, if we just left it the way it is, our thermostat might not open, we might not get heat inside the car when we turn the heat on, and we could also run into other problems. So, now it's time to fill all this up with coolant. So before we go ahead and turn the car on or put any coolant in the system, I'm gonna loosen up and take off the rad cap. Now only do this when the car is cold. Now because we did all this stuff on the car, it shouldn't be warm, but take the rad cap off and open up the top part for the overflow tank or the expansion tank. Now next up, we're gonna put a little spout there. Crack open our coolant and start pouring a little bit of the coolant into here until it's essentially flush. So you can see inside the rad that it's not full by any means. You can see the actual fins down there if you take a closer look. So we're gonna be filling this up until the coolant is flush with this little brim. Now not the top part, I'm gonna be filling it up to the lower part. I'm then gonna grab my rad cap, put it back over top. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the expansion tank to the upper fill level, 
just so that when I go ahead and turn on the car, because there's air pockets inside all of these lines, that's all gonna drop and then lower to hopefully somewhere around that point right there. And then afterwards, we're just gonna fill it up and top it up so that the cooling system is good to go. Now, as for the coolant that I'm using today, I'm using a pre-diluted 50-50 mix of OEM Honda Type 2 fluid. Now, I'll have links to whatever kind of fluid you're gonna need in the description box, so if you need coolant, I'll have some there for you to pick up. Now, just take your time with doing this. You don't wanna overflow it. Now, I'm just gonna be filling this up until the coolant is up to the brim. So now with our coolant filled up in the rad, we're gonna grab our rad cap. Nope. Well, it doesn't really matter how you install it, but I'm gonna have it just so that it's facing forwards. Like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and fill up the expansion tank. So we're gonna take off our cap, put our funnel in there, and you can see that we've got our lower line down here and our fill line, or the upper line, up here. Now I'm gonna fill it up to the max with the same coolant that we were using, the same 50-50 mix, until we get to that line. There we go. Now at this point, we're gonna seal everything back up, make sure everything's tightened, and then we can turn on our car to get everything warm. Now it's very important to get the car warm and up to operating temperatures, just so that the thermostat is gonna open up and it's gonna allow the coolant from in here to circulate with the coolant that's in the engine. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's not going to work. And once we get everything up to operating temperatures, we're gonna turn the heat up on the car so that the coolant is gonna circulate through the engine and also into the heater core. Otherwise, if we don't do that, we might not get heat when we turn on the heat inside our car. So moving in the car. Now we're gonna let this warm up and get to operating temperatures. So we're gonna turn our heat off as it is and we're gonna let this warm up. So if you can tell on the left, we've got our coolant temp. And right now the car's been off so it's cold. Now we're gonna let that warm up till about halfway and then we're gonna take a look at the car. We're gonna see if all the coolant has been circulated and we're gonna ensure that everything is working properly. Now if you can see on the gauge on the left for the coolant temperature, you can see that it's up to operating temperature. Now, to get all the coolant to circulate inside of the heater core, this is what we have to do. So if we move to our HVAC system, we're gonna turn this up and see how we have temperature set on high? Well, we're gonna keep it at as high as it goes and then for fan speed, we're gonna crank that up as much as it can and then for mode, you're just gonna try to get it to as hot as you can on the inside. So, full blast, high temperature, blowing on the face vents and the lower vents by your feet. Now once we do this, we're gonna allow this to circulate until we get nice warm, hot air through the heater. And right away we can already feel it. So this is good. That means the coolant is circulating nicely and everything should be good to go. Now I'm gonna turn the car off, let this sit, and then if I need to put more coolant inside, I'm gonna do that appropriately, but if it's between the lower and the upper, I'm gonna leave it just like that. And that, guys, is how you go ahead and install an upper and lower silicone rad hose from HPS, along with the heater core lines going to and from the heater core. If you guys wanna pick up any of the products that I used today, from the coolant, to the silicone lines, to even the OTC hose clamp pliers. You guys can check all that stuff out down in the description box as always. Now the main reason why I went ahead and upgraded these lines is because of number one, performance, number two, looks, and number three, well, the fact that these hoses, the old ones that I had on here, were getting old. Now, because I push my car hard and I like to drive spirited every once in a while, I wanna make sure that my coolant system is not gonna fail on me. Now, with that being said, I'm also gonna be doing the same thing to the Mini. So for the coolant lines, as you can see, I went with blue for water, so for water lines, I went with that. And for the other lines, say um, the vacuum lines or even any of the turbocharger piping for the Mini, I chose a different color. Now stay tuned, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about then. If you have any questions regarding this video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.